What's up guys? Today I'm gonna show you the ultimate way to farm Dark Fae. This setup is gonna be insanely free to play friendly. We are gonna use a couple of the recent fusions, but you don't really need any of them at all when you know the strategy that we're using. But if you have Grand Dog Part Trek, you can speed farm it super easily. And of course, if we talk quickly about the lethal set, I would say that the lethal set is still the best nuker set in the game, much better than Merciless, even though on paper you can get um, very high damage with Merciless if you can get all the way to the 9-piece set bonus and so on, but you will need to have both accessories and 6-piece item set, and it doesn't offer you any protection at all, though it does give you 35% ignore defense instead of the 25 that you get from the <laughs> lethal. Oh, we got the live arena going on. But the thing with lethal is that it's only 4 piece set, not 9 piece set, meaning that you can pair it with stone skin or whatever you want. And most of the top arena players, of course, it kind of depends on the setups, and on some champions, you might want to go full merciless, but Generally, it's better to go with 4-piece stone skin and 4-piece lethal. You won't be able to be one-shot with your nukers and you're, you won't be CC'd either by any type of uh, Tormin or whoever goes first. You can't even be turn meter manipulated. It's still the best nuke set, I would say, and certainly it's never gonna go away. It's not something that you want to miss out. and. In early parts of the game, or if you don't have a specific setup built for the boss, it might seem like a very hard boss, but I like Dark Fae, I think it's very well designed boss, and it is very hard initially, but if you have a team built for it, it can actually be insanely easy. And today I'm gonna show you how to cheese it with Grand Dog Part Drag. Like I said, all of the other champions here can be substituted, and even the part trick, I'll go through all of those methods in a second. But let's quickly do one run and I'll explain the strategy and the boss mechanics a little bit more in the detail. Okay, so during the waves, most of our abilities are actually blocked and we're not really using any of them, except some that we don't need on the boss. But we have a lot of turn meter manipulation on A1s and we can easily just kill the waves with A1s and we don't have to worry about death. When we get to actual boss battle, the boss is at 120 speed, uh, 250 speed on 120 hard, Dark Fae, and you need to have your Grand Dog part Drake faster than that. He's gonna open with the turn meter boost and not the ally attack. And with that, our Nuker, which in our case is Herndig, is gonna go first and one shot the waves. And after that, we're basically just gonna turn meter manipulate the boss and like <laughs> take him down with our damage and that's pretty much it. There's really not that much here to worry about afterwards. It kind of depends on your champions and speeds if the boss is able to get any turns after this or not. It might be able to get a turn, that still shouldn't be an issue. There's one very easy way to cheese this is that the boss actually always copies your champion with the highest attack and you could have anybody in your team the highest attack. It could be somebody that doesn't pose any threat to you at all. For instance, Royal Guard is a good choice because Royal Guard does the AoE nuke as his first ability and that barely scales from attack at all. I think it has 0.1 attack scaling and mostly scales from the enemy max HP, meaning that he's definitely not gonna one-shot you. If you had Royal Guard, for instance, the fastest champion, there would be nothing to worry about if he gets copied, and you could build your fastest champ, uh, your highest attack champion with low speed, so that it doesn't even get the turn, but you could have your team a lot faster like than I have mine here, or more turn meter manipulation, and the boss is basically never go gonna get a turn, unless you get resisted like 10 times in row or, or whatever, but it doesn't really matter, and even if that happens, we're very safe here. I intentionally don't really want to put my best gear here, because it doesn't really matter if the boss gets a turn and 
I'm not going for like ultra fast speeds, but I guarantee you that you could make this a little bit faster. Like you could level up the um, the Great Hall on your Doom Tower and get some speed, and the boss would guaranteed never get a turn. But our team is not that fast because you really don't need to be. Actually, let me quickly show the other setup I run. This is my actual team. This is more like the <laughs> the Whaley version because I just happen to get Acrisia. Okay, so here's my more Whaley team comp on the boss. Again, like I said, you don't really need any specific champions, and this isn't this actually isn't more safe than the first setup to do it. It's faster, but this is actually harder to do because Acrisia's passive reduces the damage that you take and you can't really one-shot her, but we're able to do this fine. And you could even do a safer version than our first setup because we didn't have a decrease speed debuff on the boss. If you had one, the boss would be much safer, though it might be slower depending what kind of champion you have with decreased speed, like how much damage that they do. But if you're really early in the game and struggling with the gear and so on, you would, you should definitely go with a champion that has decreased speed. There's many, many options of different champions that can do it. For instance, Royal Guard can do it, and he also has AoE Nook. He's an excellent choice for the strategy that I just mentioned about the boss copying your highest attack champion as well. One other champion would be the newly buffed Hall's Ring, but I'll talk about him a bit more later. Let's just finish this battle and th then, I'll <laughs> then I'll talk about the actual setup and the builds. But as you can see, it's very easy, it's very consistent. Even if my allure died here, it wouldn't matter. And like I said, I could make this way faster and put better gear here, but it doesn't really, it's not necessary for me. I'm not trying to go for world records. I'm just trying to kill the boss with as bad gear as possible while having a sa safe and fast setup on it. And as you can see, we unlocked the Dark Fae yesterday and my fastest run is 26 turns. I can probably get like 20 turns run if I'm really lucky. And I could definitely do it faster if I really wanted to, but I'm not going to go for that. So if we really quickly look at the setup on the original team, like I mentioned, Herndick only needs to be faster than 250. I have a little bit more speed here, but <laughs> I have pretty good gear and I intentionally put really, really bad pieces on him and he's still a little bit extra speed, but you don't even need this. On the other hand, you could go way faster as well if you want to and you have the gear for this. If you want to kill the boss faster and make sure you will never be able to lose to it. But we basically have Grand Oak Part Raid's um, abilities disabled apart from in the last wave. And he does some couple interesting things which make him especially interesting for Dark Fae. You could totally run this without him, of course, and just you need to have a nuker that is fastest champion in your team when here we're running Part Drake. You need to have 250 plus speed nuker that can one-shot your team. That can be quite hard to do if you're not super endgame. It's much easier to do this with Part Drake because not only does Part Drake give you turn meter boost and speed buff on the team, but we get the 20% turn meter so you can run a slower nuker, but also on his passive, he does give you attack buff on your attack scaling nukers, so you need a lot worse gear on your attack nuker to one-shot your team, but this might cause some issues kind of depending what champions you use, because as you saw, our Gnut also got the defense buff, so if you're running a lot of defense scaling champions, they might not get one-shot, but it's usually not even an issue because you're just gonna kill them anyway if you don't, if there's like one or two champions that don't die to the original AoE nook, but we open with the turn meter boost and after that we're always prioritizing the ally attack because we obviously have a lot of turn meter manipulation on, on our skills and Bard Drake just works really well with this setup. We even have a chance to reduce skill cooldowns on the A1 which works really well in this kind of setup where we have some big abilities like Knuts that do a lot of damage 
on Gnoot, we basically basically have the skills disabled on the waves. You could have them completely di disabled or not at all. But the most important thing is that you're saving the A3 for the final wave, just if you want to make it faster. But even if you didn't have any AI presets, it would work. Though I would disable the A2 on the boss battle so that he mostly uses the A1, which also reduces the turn meter and works super well here. Now, Allure and Armiger are just examples. You could run two of either one of them, or you could run any any like any champion with turn meter manipulation. I mean, it's the same with Knut, but Knut does uh, Knut does a lot of damage. And on the other hand, if you're going for ultra hard min max team, then you could run like three Knuts, Bard Drake, and one AOE Nook. That would be the best setup. That would be way better than even running Acrisia here, but uh, on Allure, I think we don't use any of the skills, or we don't use the A2 with decreased defense on the first wave, because I think Herndick does the decreased defense, yeah, and I save it for the next wave, but on the actual boss, um, boss battle, we have all of the abilities disabled apart from the A1, that reduces the turn meter, of course, I don't even have max crit rate here, but it really doesn't matter. Like I said, I've been moving moving my gear around a lot for like um, Curse City and so on, and I probably stole some of her gear a couple times, and this isn't even optimized at all. As you can see, it's pretty casual to do this if you have the right setup. And it's the same with the army gear. I mean, I guess you kind of want to save the A2 for the boss, since it does damage, but it doesn't really matter. Now Herdic is a little bit special case here. He used to be actually kind of necessary for Dark Fae if you wanted to speedrun, because originally when Dark Fae was released, we didn't have the AI presets, and I think they were released maybe like year after Dark Fae, and during that time Herdic was actually mandatory if you wanted to, wanted to speedrun Dark Fae, unless you had like Hegemons or some other cheese strategies, but um, Herndick does reset his cooldowns on uh, on the A1 on kill, and that kind of makes it so that it doesn't really matter if you use his abilities or not. You could just completely not disable them on any waves because let's say that all of his skills are on cooldown in the last um, in the boss battle, then he's gonna open with the A1, kill one of your champions get an extra turn and reset the cooldowns, so he's still gonna one-shot the waves. He's very good because of that. And he also does have a turn meter decrease on the A2, but he's actually not optimal or necessary at all at this point. You could run any nuker with AoE skill, and as long as you disable the skill on the waves and make sure you save one for the actual boss battle, any nuker will do. And Herndick doesn't have very high damage actually, so it will be a lot easier to do do it with, let's say, Baron or whoever has higher damage scaling. And you might have some other champions with turn meter manipulation or decrease speed or some kind of other utility. So you could basically basically run many things here, and you need to think about your own account. I just run Herndick because I use his. I've used him for this since start, and I don't really use him in anything else, so I might as well keep using him. If I really want to like try hard and min max, I would use some other nuker, and if you want to do it, then you should run Bad Drake with triple Knut and some high damage AoE nuke. Now that pretty much explains the boss, and you should be able to easily kill it with, with this strategy. But let's quickly look at some of the other champions that I mentioned. Like I said, Royal Guard is a very good one, and most people are gonna have him. I think he's high else, right? Surely he's high else. Yeah, so Royal Guard does decrease defense on A1. That might be useful, but Herndick does do it as well, and if you're running Gnut or multiple Gnuts, you, you're not even going to need the decreased defense, but that might be useful. He does do the decreased speed on A3. 
which is pretty much the best debuff that you can get on the boss in this encounter and also turn meter uh, manipulation so he's pretty much the very optimal if you if you don't have the best gear and you're kind of struggle, struggling to make a setup for this you should definitely use royal guard and of course he does the aoe nook and like i mentioned if the copy if the boss copies your royal guard he's gonna open with the a2 which definitely is not gonna one shot your team he's not gonna open with the a3 so if you have low speeds but you build your royal guard as the highest attack champion you should be able to make a very safe team that is gonna work every time i do recommend him even though i didn't have him built if i really wanted to try hard i probably would put royal guard there but it it really doesn't matter to me so i i just went with i with what i already had geared now one champion that actually we, you, you, we can't see it in the game right now but uh do i have it here so horse ring just got buffed but it's actually not in the game horse ring, horse ring is one champion that i would definitely recommend if you happen to have him but he's gonna have now turn meter decrease on a1 very good damage on the a2 and a3 with ignore defense and he also does decrease speed on the boss so false ring would be a good choice there's many other champions with turn meter manipulation and decrease speed i would use some of those you don't need to run the exact same setup that i did but you definitely can can run the exact same setup and if you really want to go like full full free to play here you could definitely run like a part drake three army girls and whatever aoe nuke was the maybe i should do a video about that just for the memes later but i i only have one army girl so i would have to level up a couple other ones but what's the one champion the one common one i should probably <laughs> is it here is it sister militant yeah maybe i should do try to do it with uh Part Drake and multiple army girls and sister militant. Pretty sure it's doable, but you can do it with that or you can do it with whatever champions you have and take that into account. But I hope you found this guide helpful. If you have any questions about it, I will definitely answer in comments. So good luck. That's it. Have a nice day and see ya.